Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Jamie Photography. Um, another video today, what we're going to do is uh, the opposite of what I normally do. I'm normally a, a day to night person, but what I'm gonna show you today is a, a night to day shot. How to take uh, a really mundane picture and turn it into a little bit of fine art um, a beautiful sunrise lovely colors so this is what we're going to be aiming for uh, this shot here but let me take you to where we started so we are um, before dawn uh, we have got beautiful mist across the meadows and uh, we've shot for the highlights so we are slightly underexposed but it gives us plenty of information to play with in the shadows as we go forward Okay, so let's start this uh, night to day shot. So this is a, a photograph I took in uh, Denham Vale, which is on the Suffolk Essex border in the, in the east of England. Um, it was quite early in the morning, get up the details there. So this is 15 seconds at F8, ISO 400. So this is just before blue hour was really just about to start. So um, so just just a shot across, across the, um, the meadow towards the trees and towards the east where the, the sun will, will, will be likely to rise in uh, probably about 45 minutes to an hour. So what I'm going to do is going to take this image and I'm going to turn it into a daytime shot. So we're turning it night to day today. So first thing I'm going to do is going to go to the crop tool. I want to make sure that my horizon here is level. So you can pick the little spirit level, the angle tool here inside the crop tool. You can click on one side where the uh, horizon or the line for the horizon is holding down the left key move across to the same same elevation on the far side and then it will correct and give you the level uh, that you want you can press done at the bottom or just hit return to accept that <clears throat> so now what I want to do is uh, is bring this alive and to show that it's actually daytime so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the shadows just a little bit, not too much to, to light this foreground. And I'm just going to bring down the highlights just a little bit. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to add a little bit of white just to bring some of the, the contrast in there. And I'm going to hold down the Option or, or Alt key. And I'm just going to bring the black down just to, to, to see where I'm getting some blacks down the bottom there. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to uh, take a mask, I'm going to select the sky and then when the sky is selected I'm going to go to the three little dots to the right of the mask, click on that, left click on that and then intersect this mask with a linear gradient. So now I can add a linear gradient to the sky only. I can reduce the the uh, exposure a little bit at the top there a little bit more blue that's looking okay and then i'm going to right click on this um, mask and duplicate it uh, and this time i'm just going to make it much smaller towards the top not quite so dark this one there we go so i'm going to create a new mask uh, my favorite radial gradient and i'm going to make it look like the sun is coming through over here so I'm going to take quite a large radial gradient here I'm going to plonk it where I think the Sun is going to go I'm going to raise the exposure raise the color temp a little bit of uh, tint as well with magnolia raise that and I'm going to boost the saturation just a little bit not too much magnolia there we go so adding a bit more temp till we get that that sort of effect so in fact I'm going to make that a little bit larger and I'm going to add a little bit of contrast and some clarity to make the sky pop a little bit there. So that's looking pretty good. So <clears throat> I'm going to create another mask, another radial gradient, a smaller one this time that fits in this area where we think the sun's going to go. Again, I'm going to boost the, the color just a little bit, add some saturation. Yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. Now, I'm not going to add the sun just yet because um, I'm going to create a reflection as though this was looking across a lake towards a, a bank. 
Um, so what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to accept where we are at the moment. Um, I'm just going to open up the shadows just a little bit more, just so we get the mist rolling over there, which looks looks very nice. I'm um, I'm also just before going to go in there, just add a little bit more mist. I'm going to go into mask. I'm going to take a brush. Um, that brush is going to have a hundred percent feather, fifty percent flow. So we've got nice soft edges, and then what I'm going to select is is the um, dehaze. So I'm actually going to add some haze. So we put this, I'll take the brush, I'll place it roughly in the center of here. I'll click once, I'll hold down the shift key, and I'll click on the other side. And you see how it just picks up the, the mist. I can, I can move the slider to create more mist or less mist. It, it's quite a nice little slider. So we're going to put a little bit more mist in there. That's looking good. So now I'm ready to go over into Photoshop. So I'm going to right click on the screen here, edit in. Uh, Adobe Photoshop 2022 and it's just going to open that for me and uh, import that that image now the image itself was taken with a Sony a7r2 so it's a 42 megapixel image and um, excellent dynamic range so you're able to to pull pull the information uh, from the background so now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a duplicate layer here um, so you can right click on the the layer bar and you can you can say duplicate layer this layer I'm going to going to call uh, the lake okay so I'm going to click that in there now what I want to do is I want to make a copy of the sky which I've done here with the lake and I want to effectively invert it so what I do I'm clicked on the lake layer here I'm then going to um, select the whole screen which you can use command or control s um, sorry that's control control s is save apologies uh, command or control or a which is for all um, and then you can do command or control T uh, which gives us the transpose once you've got the transpose, you can right click on the screen and you can say flip horizontal and it will flip, oh, apologies, a flip vertical is what I wanted, not horizontal. There you go. Flick vertical. So now I have the image upside down. So so I can get the alignment correct with the with the background layer. What I want to do is make this one semi opaque. So whilst the lake is, is clicked, I'm going to go up to the blending mode here where it says normal and I'm going to select screen and what that does is it makes that layer semi-transparent so we can see where we are right now I've got it the blending mode in screen I can see the two the two layers one through the other as now the lake the one that's on top is trans semi-transparent so now I'm going to go to the uh, move tool or V you can click and I can just grab and move the lake left or right up or down you'll see the little pink lines appear in the middle and what that's telling us is is that it's aligned completely aligned with the with the layer below so I'm going to move it down until it looks like I've got a little lake edge you can see there I've just taken down so there's a little let edge there and I'm going to let go as you can see so I'm going to return the lake uh, layer to normal and I'm going to put the lake layer behind so I'm going to pull it down and put it behind, unlock this one, apologies, and I'm going to bring that down and put it behind there. So the top layer is showing us our scene that we, we want to have. And so what I want to do is remove part of the bottom of this image to let the lake image show through. So to do that, I'll click on this layer, to layer zero, the top one, and uh, I will then select uh, a layer mask uh, by clicking on this little square flag with a circle in the center of it um, now what that's done is given me a white mask layer which means um, that that there's nothing white white uh, conceals black reveals so we want to to make a black uh, break in the mask underneath so I can select the color down down here on the bottom left you can see that you've got your your color modes and if it's not in black then just click on the color and go down to the very far left corner and you will have black I'm going to press B for brush. You can select brush from the tools here. 
um, and I'm, I effectively want the edge to be uh, not too hard so I'm going to go into the brush uh, selection up here and I'm going to choose hardness as a zero so I don't want hardness I want, I want, a, I want a soft edge and we've got occupancy at 79% of flow at 100% quite high because I, I actually want to try to remove this so I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger and then I'm going to effectively um, in whilst this layer is this layer uh, mask is clipped and I'm in black and I've got brush I'm going to go to the edge of the screen I'm going to click and I'm going to go to the other side over here holding down the shift key I'm going to click again and that's going to start to show the layer from underneath so make my brush a little bit bigger now and then I can paint the rest of this into the scene here so just come across there again because we're not at 100% flow we we just want to uh, go back over it if we want 100% to show so now we have the reflection of the lake and we have the sky but the real trick here is to ever so slightly blur the water because it's not always perfect yes quite often it is but in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer below the lake layer I'm going to go up to uh, filter I'm going to go to blur I'm going to get uh, motion blur and I'm going to apply a very small amount only probably about 25 something like that with the angle set at 90 degrees so that's top to bottom and what it will do is it will apply to this layer an ever so slight um, blurring in, in that direction. Now you can see the effect if I go back into that motion blur and I make it much greater you can see you can create much more of a blur and it drags the lines much like water does so um, you can you can choose how much you want to to blur or not blur the water just by moving that backwards and forwards so so there we go so that that's actually all I'm going to do in in Photoshop is just do that mirror I'm just going to bring these two together so I'm going to select the top one hold down the shift key select the bottom one right click and then I'm going to merge the layers together now a lot of people say keep the layers separate because then you can come back later and still mess around with the individual layers and that is true but in doing so when you save it it's a much bigger file and it will take up much more space on your uh, on your hard drive so I just like to when I'm happy with the image I like to just uh, put it into a single layer then I'm going to go to uh, file close and then save and that will put it back back into Lightroom and as you can see down the bottom left corner here it's saving the image so once that's done we will go back into Lightroom and our image with the with the uh, uh, lake there uh, is it looks very nice now I'm going to re recrop slightly I did miss a little bit on the, the right hand side so I'm just going to bring that over to take that out and bring the sky down a little bit just just so it's not quite central and I'm just going to come over from the from the uh, left just take out these two little bumps there like that so I'm happy with the crop so now we've got the sky uh, with the uh, with the lake that we've invented um, so it's no longer a really a photograph now we're heading more towards fine art uh, composites so now I want to put a sun in the sky so I'm going to select masks I'm going to select a radial gradient I'm going to put a smaller radial gradient in here which is a little bit brighter a little bit more color a little bit brighter like so I'm going to select another, create another radial gradient and this time I'm going to make a circle for the sun and I'm going to place that near the center there where, it's, where the sun would be and I would raise the, raise the brightness, not too much because it, it burns through but just as though it's coming through, coming through the top of that cloud there. Now we do need to make an equal opposite uh, reflection so what, what I'm going to do is uh, firstly I'm going to take the, the 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 new radio added dead it was a bit brighter I'm going to uh, duplicate that mask there we go and then I'm going to bring that down if I can select it I'm going to move the sun out of the way for a minute 
Oh, it looks like I created two suns. That's fine. I'll use the sun down here in that place. And then also we will... Let's move that sun out of the way for a second so we can select that one. I'm going to right-click duplicate the mask for that one and bring that one down here as well into the water. I'm going to stretch that one just a little bit. I'm going to put the sun back in the center there. And the sun that we have down here I'm going to now stretch it just a little bit because it would never be perfectly round the reflection would always look and I'm actually going to dim it slightly because you would lose a little bit of the reflection intensity from the surface of the water so make sure it's perfectly aligned with the one above that's good and click done on those so as you can see we've we've got the sun in the sky We've got uh, the reflection in the water. It's still a bit bright, so I'm going to go back into masks. I'm going to go to that one there, the, the sun in the water. I'm just going to dim him down a little bit more. Maybe make him a bit wider and a bit, a bit longer. Just trying to get that natural sort of look, really, um, from, from that, the water area. So, effectively, make that one a little bit dark, darker as well. Now what we've got is a, a, a sunrise... So we turned our night uh, today. We could do some more fettling if we wanted to. I could go into masks, take a brush with 100% feather, 50% flow. I'm going to bring up the clarity and the contrast. And I'm just going to run a line across where these trees are just to make them pop a little bit in the image. And what I'm also going to do is create uh, a brush and a new brush here I'm going to bring up the exposure a little bit and I'm just going to put a bit of light on these trees so with with the the brush selected with with lots of feather reasonable flow but I'm also going to click the auto mask so it stays with the darker areas not brightening up the sky so I can just brighten up the edge of those those trees as though that they were being illuminated by the sun the sunrise there maybe even add a little bit of color to them not too much just a little bit a little bit more brightness some contrast and a little bit of clarity so um click ok so there you go that's how you turn a night into day create your own sunrise um take it away from being a photograph that you took but turned it a little bit of fine art as a nice landscape and I would truly believe people would struggle to know that that wasn't actually real so I'll leave you with that hope you enjoyed that and if you've got any questions pop them in the comments I'm more than happy to answer any questions I'd love you to subscribe so I can start to build this channel and um, yeah we'll uh, like the video and I'll speak to you again soon